Hello everyone, welcome to Life Skills class and we are continuing with the module 4. Today we'll see Challenger case study. This is a part of your Life Skills curriculum for S4 Triple E, EC and Civil. I am Rizaid Abdul Rahim, Assistant Professor in MBA Department of Sri Narayan Institute of Technology, Urdu. What is the purpose of a case study? It is to understand, evaluate, critically analyze an event, a report, a work of literature, or nonfiction, useful for academic and professional progress, and also to develop deeper understanding and have an analytical mind. So you don't believe whatever you see, you don't read, you don't believe whatever you read, but you kind of develop an analytical mind, critically analyze things and understand. The Challenger Space Shuttle disaster. It occurred on a winter morning in Florida on 28 January 1986. The key players in this case are NASA, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, Morton Tiger Incorporation, the contractor for NASA who built the solid rocket boosters, Larry Molloy, NASA official who persuaded the engineers to okay the launch, Alan McDonald, director of Solid Rocket Motors Project in Morton Cycle. Joseph Kilminster, engineer in management position again in Morton Cycle. The diagram of the space shuttle, the picture of the space shuttle. Key synopsis. NASA's fleet of Challenger space shuttle started operating in 1983 as STS-51I was the 10th Challenger mission. The launch had been postponed several times before and was finally scheduled for 20th January 1986 from Kennedy Space Center, Florida. Now I have highlighted a few places here and there in the case that is for you to understand the important key players, the important terms, so that you can give your answers and evaluate and analyze the case. NASA was very anxious to complete the launch due to pressure from different quarters. So there was a lot of pressure from within the NASA, from the higher ups in the NASA, from the government of America, and also from Morton Tycol, which had been the contractor for NASA solid rocket boosters for a long time. The winter that year was particularly cold, and on the night before the launch, the mercury sank to 13 degrees below zero. So it was minus 13 degrees very cold. On the night of the 27th, all those responsible for the shuttle were expected to check and recheck their part of the vehicle and OK the launch. So the engineers had to check and recheck and they have to OK the launch in freezing conditions. Though some of the officials couldn't check everything thoroughly, they OK'd the launch. So uh, the conditions were very freezing, uh, even though there were some issues, um, people said, OK, let's go along with the launch. Alan McDonald, an engineer for Morton Tiger, the company that built the solid rocket boosters of the space shuttle, refused to sign the document. So Alan McDonald, who was uh, from the Morton Tiger, the company Morton Tiger, which built the solid rocket boosters for the Challenger uh, space shuttle, he refused to sign the document. He knew that the rubber O-rings, now O-rings are those rings that are around the solid rocket boosters and they, the purpose of O-rings is that it should not uh, allow any fuel to leak or any uh, kind of uh, gas to leak from the rocket boosters. So that O-ring, what happens is that since it's a freezing condition, the O-ring may crack when high heat was being emanated on the launch. So when the rocket goes up, when the space shuttle goes up, there is a lot of heat, a lot of pressure, and the flames may crack these O-rings because these O-rings were not tested for low temperatures. And these have been never tested for low temperatures and felt that the low temperature could cause the O-rings to crack and fail in flight. He conveyed the message to his superior, Joseph Kilminster. So Alan McDonald's uh, superior, Joseph Kilminster, was given the message from Alan McDonald that this launch may be uh, dangerous, we should not go along with it, and he didn't sign to. But Joseph Kilminster, he contacted Larry Molloy of NASA, and these two persons were very much keen to go along with the launch because there was a lot of pressure on them. 
A teleconference was held between NASA and Morton Cycle. Two engineers, Rogers Boyce Jolie and Arnold Thompson, who had worked on the project, confirmed that the rings had never been tested under such low temperature conditions and pointed out that it might be a dangerous situation, it might be dangerous to launch. They tried to convey the point with graphs and charts, but the management of Morton Cycle were not convinced. NASA, too, interpreted the absence of data as a consent for the launch. So, Morton Thicol didn't take it very seriously. They were not convinced with what the engineers who worked on this, Roger Boyce, Jolie, and Arnold Thompson said. And NASA was also, since they didn't get any data from Morton Thicol, they didn't see any need to be concerned. So, Joseph Kilminster overruled Arnold McDonald and gave his OK. Larry Mulloy of NASA was also happy with the decision. On the morning of 28th, in spite of the objections raised by McDonald, Roger Boistry, and Arnold Thompson, NASA proceeded with the launch. At 11.38 a.m., the shuttle lifted off, carrying seven astronauts, including a civilian. She was a teacher, Krista McAuliffe. She was a civilian. She also went on this uh, mission. Smoke started coming out of the SRB joint, solid rocket solid rocket boosters joined and gave way to flames. Within 72 seconds, the flames had spread to the external fuel tank. At 73 seconds, there was a massive explosion and the Challenger space shuttle disintegrated, killing all of the seven people aboard. Now, this is what had happened. Within seconds, within seconds of launch, just after a minute and few seconds, all of the crew members were dead. So the question is, so the questions that we can reflect is, what could NASA have done differently in the launch decision process? What could have NASA done more so that the lives of these seven crew members could have been saved? What if any professional responsibilities were neglected by each of the key players in this case? What are the responsibilities that these people could have done more? What the key players, the key players uh, including Joseph Kilminster, Larry Molloy, NASA as a whole, Morton Tycho as a whole, what could have they done to, to have the situation under control and, and let not the disaster happen? I want you to watch this video. This is the video of what happened on 28 January 1986 with the Challenger space shuttle. It was a bitter cold but sparkling clear morning at Cape Canaveral. Here at the last seconds of the countdown. Three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th space shuttle mission and it has cleared the tower. All the communications between the shuttle and mission control indicated everything was going fine. There was a sense of relief that the much-delayed flight was finally underway. Engines at 65%, three engines uh, running normally, three good fuel cells, three good APUs. Engines throttling up, three engines now at 104%. Challenger, go at throttle up. go at throttle up. It happened just over one minute into flight. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity, 2,900 feet per second. Altitude, nine nautical miles. Downrange distance, seven nautical miles. From mission control, silence. Then the bland, chilling report. We have a report from the flight dynamics officer that the vehicle has exploded. Flight director confirms that. We are uh, looking at uh, checking with the recovery forces to see uh, what can be done at this point. Slow motion. A search effort couldn't begin for some 15 minutes after this. Debris, they said, just kept raining from the sky. The head of the space shuttle program had no explanations, just sorrow at the tragedy. At 11.40 a.m. this morning, space program experienced a national tragedy with the explosion of the space shuttle Challenger approximately a minute and a half after launch from here at the Kennedy Space Center. Computer-enhanced video shows the explosion in detail. One explosion appears to happen at the rear of the spacecraft, around the main engines, perhaps in one of the two solid rocket boosters. Then a blast higher up. 
The shuttle was instantly a blazing fireball. NASA has appointed a committee of top engineers and scientists to investigate the catastrophe. Orders have been issued to impound all records concerning the flight, down to the personal notes of all the flight controllers. Dan Molina, NBC News at the Johnson Space Center, Houston. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching. And thanks for listening too.